Tusk of the Boar is the brand new strand waveframe coming from Iron Banner this week and is also the second ever waveframe to release in the kinetic slot. Part of the reason many people are charging into the Iron Banner playlist is because it's also the second ever waveframe after good old Forbearance to receive chain reaction, a large part of why Forbearance is so popular in the first place. Naturally, this gives a pretty strong reason to go out and farm for it and in today's video we're going to be breaking down everything you need to know about this weapon when it comes to ad clear, unique perk interactions and what the hell you should choose as your left column perk. So let's start with the obvious. Is it any good for ad clear and how does it compare to forbearance? As mentioned previously, the presence of chain reaction instantly makes it a top pick because of the sheer ad clear power the perk is able to offer. Looking at it side by side, the perk behaves identically on both weapons, though sometimes it appears to look off, but at the moment I'm just putting that down to either a visual bug or desync. However, where things start to take a turn is the elemental synergies that Tusk of the Boar is capable of achieving. Because Tusk is a strand weapon, it can get access to unraveling rounds, which when paired with chain reaction causes the explosions to spread the unravel debuff. This just so happens to be incredibly easy to do this season because of the artifact perk unraveling orbs which grants unraveling rounds to your strand weapons after collecting an orb of power. This further raises the potential area of effect of the weapon and you can even take things a step further by using the other artifact perk horde shuttle which occasionally spawns in a threadling after unraveling a target. Combining all three of these aspects together not only makes the battlefield a pleasure to look at but it also results in it becoming an S tier ad clear tool. Of course, Forbearance does still have a slight edge because of the Soul Drinker origin trait, however they are both in different slots. So this comparison can only go so far. The main point I wanted to stress is that the ad clear potency of Tusk is on par if not better than Forbearance. Before we move on to the next section, I briefly want to touch on some of the other options, starting with Hatchling. Having Hatchling will cause a Threadling to spawn after scoring three rapid kills, which isn't too bad, but in my humble opinion, this is a bit of a wasted perk since the artifact perks this season let you do the same thing on top of having Chain Reaction in its place, though it might be worth keeping one in case the Chain Reaction nerf ends up hitting hard. Next, we have three damage perks in the form of Bait and Switch, Swashbuckler, and Vorpal. And let me preface by saying that yes, these are pretty good damage perks, but when your weapon is killing red bars in a single shot anyway, do you really need the extra damage perk? And are you also willing to sacrifice a better ad clear perk like Chain Reaction? I wouldn't have thought so. You see, the main strength of a waveframe is its ad clear. And while damage perks like Bait and Switch or Swashbuckler might help you deal more damage to chunkier targets, at that point you're simply not using the waveframe correctly. So when looking at the perks on a waveframe, you should always prioritize the ones that enhance your ad clear capabilities, which for Tusk of the Boar specifically are Chain Reaction, Hatchling, and maybe Deconstruct. Speaking of, before the weapon's release, the presence of Deconstruct had some people excited because of the potential implications the perk could offer when slotted in a waveframe specifically. For those who are unaware, Deconstruct is essentially two perks in one because on the one hand, scoring enough hits from the magazine will refund a small amount of ammo from thin air as well as reloading the weapon. And on the other, after scoring this hit requirement, it also buffs your damage against constructs by 40%. It was theorized that this would allow you to have an infinite ammo waveframe due to the way that the rounding worked on the perk. And well, it does. It just has some unfortunate strings attached. Or it's bugged. I made a video on this a couple days ago, but basically you don't get your ammo back while the deconstruct timer is still active. However, it should actually work as you'd expect, since on other weapons, you still get ammo refunded even while the timer is active. In reality, the only way to get ammo back while the timer is active and refresh the counter specifically on a waveframe is by hitting an enemy with a direct impact, then a wave. Hits using the wave won't reset the ammo refund counter, which is either a bug or completely intentional. Though I'm leaning more towards it being a bug. If it is a bug, then once it's fixed, it will actually make Deconstruct a pretty strong perk, but if it's by design, then I'm quite hesitant to recommend it since what good is an ad clear perk if you have to wait to ad clear with it? That said, I'd now say it's definitely worth getting a roll with Deconstruct just in case it's a bug and ends up getting fixed. I first saw this talked about by D2Clarity on Twitter, so if you want to know more, I've left a link to their tweet in the description. All right then, now let's move on to the next section. What the hell should you choose in the left column? Let's start with the perks we can instantly rule out, the first of which is Envious Assassin. While typically an S tier option on damage weapons, having this perk on an ad clear weapon is no good because you're using it for ad clear all the time, leaving no opportunities to use your other weapons that would typically be weaker for ad clear to overflow your magazine. So yeah, try to avoid this one. Pulse monitor is all right, but also fairly situational because it only works when you're down to red bar health, which in the world of restoration, devour, and banner of war is rarely something that happens anymore. Hard pass. Grave robber is a nice utility perk, but again, the purpose of a waveframe is to mow down every ad in front of you. So stopping to melee one just so you can get a single reload is not very optimal, at least in my eyes. Slice is the first perk which actually offers some nice utility in the form of applying the sever debuff. However, on a waveframe, this perk is a little complicated for several reasons. First of all, since the wave kills the ads 
Atlas in one shot, you won't have the chance to receive any meaningful value from the Sever procs because, well, the adds are dead. But when paired with Chain Reaction, it could splash to any nearby targets, which is a nice bonus. Furthermore, shout out to Marceline in the Discord for bringing this up, but having Slice on a Titan specifically can be quite nice since the only useless piece of kit that Strand Titan has is its Barricade, so giving it a use to proc Slice now allows you to have a ranged Tangle Creation option, since the Sever debuff will count towards Tangle Creation. Furthermore, quite the devious combo is running Radiant Dance Machines on Hunter, which actually allows you to have Slice on every shot, as well as reloading it if paired with Marksman Dodge, which could be a solid option. Overall, I'd say this is the quote must-have perk, but let's quickly wrap up the other options. Slideways lets you reload the weapon by sliding, but is unfortunately on a short 3 second cooldown, which doesn't let you spam it. You can bypass this cooldown by swapping weapons, so it's really up to you, but personally, I'm not a big fan of Slideways, and I'd much rather have a better utility perk like Slice. Finally, we come to Enlightened Action, a perk which looks like a solid option on the surface, but if you care to dig a little deeper, you'll see that most of the benefits provided by are also provided by the gun's origin trait, Field Tested, which even at two stacks almost maxes your reload speed and doesn't go away, unlike Enlightened Action, which only lasts for two seconds. On top of that, the handling is already pretty good on this weapon, but if you're quite keen on stat maxing, the combo of both is sure to do that quite well for you. It's also worth noting that Field Tested does take around 25 to 30 kills to get that times two stack going, so if you don't want to wait, you might prefer Enlightened Action because the benefits are instant despite being short-lived. Overall, I would say that the roll to chase definitely includes Chain Reaction in the fourth column, and as for the third column, there is more of an element of personal preference, but my recommendation would have to be Slice, due to the versatility it offers for some classes and the occasional utility provided by the Sever debuff. Once again, I also think it's worth holding on to at least one roll with Deconstruct on the off chance it's currently bugged. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this weapon breakdown, and I'll see you in the next one. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Your support means the world. And if you're really into the content I create, consider becoming a member of the channel, which not only lets you support me in the best way possible, it also nets you a whole host of awesome perks along with it. A massive shout out to these members up on screen, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, dear viewer.